Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you can't already tell from the title, today I'm going to be talking about everything you need to know in order to own a hamster. So I really wanted to make a video like this for a while now, but I thought that this would be the perfect time to make this type of video because it is nearing Christmas. Christmas is two days away. So I feel like some of you guys might be getting hamsters for Christmas. And I just really want to make sure that all of you guys are 100% prepared to get your hamster and that all of your hamsters live the absolute best lives that they can and that everybody is just ready to go. So I thought I would make one all-encompassing video of everything you need to know in order to own a hamster. Now, um, if I forget anything, I will be doing voiceovers or I will add it down in the description or something like that. And if I still forget stuff, please feel free to comment down below anything that you feel like I missed because I just really want to make sure that everybody knows everything that they need to know before owning a hamster and they're just ready to go to give their hamster the best life possible. So anyways, let's go ahead and get on to the video. All right, so I just wanna let you guys know I have, I'm have i gonna be looking down at my phone because I have a bunch of different little sections that I'm gonna be going through in order to just give you guys a general overview of everything you should know in order to own your hamster. So first we have where you should get your hamster, then I'm gonna be talking about what you need for a hamster in terms of supplies. Then um, when you get your first hamster, about cleaning the cage slash daily care. And then I will be talking about holding and handling your hamster and the space you will need for your hamster in total. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is making sure you actually want a hamster and you have the time, space, and energy to care for another pet because even though hamsters are labeled as being beginner pets, I still feel like they are not a necessarily a child's pet because I personally got hamsters when I was in third grade or second grade and I don't think I was personally ready to get a hamster. So I don't want to necessarily state that I wasn't ready for a hamster, but I just don't think that I knew how to correctly care for a hamster. and so. That's where parents can really come in is just helping the kid care for it and make sure that the hamster is getting everything that it needs to get. It was my responsibility and I loved having my hamster. However, I feel like it kind of should have been like a parent and a child thing. And um, I just feel like if you are getting one for your child, I feel like it should be both your and your child's responsibility because some children are just not, they're not ready for a hamster. They're, they don't know how to handle a hamster. They will not keep up with cleaning the cage. And you need to make sure that if you are getting it for a kid or you are a kid yourself, that you have enough time and money to pay for a hamster because if you need to take your hamster to the vet, you need to make sure that your parents are willing to pay for that or you are willing to pay for that because that, that is important. So making sure you have enough space, number one, make sure that you have a space in your house that you can put a decent sized cage, critter trails, small cages, I'll get to all of that later, but those are too small and you're gonna need to block out a larger area in your house to put your hamster's cage to have all of their toys and everything you need to have for that. So just make sure you have an area in your house and I personally can't even put my hamster cage in my room. I guess I could if I wanted to, but I cannot listen to hamster wheels at night. Like I can just not sleep with that. So make sure that if you are very like noise sensitive when you're sleeping, that you have somewhere elsewhere in your house that isn't super loud, isn't super bright, that you can put your hamster in for uh, the time being. Um, make sure that you have enough time to care for your hamster. Uh, a hamster. In terms of time commitment, I wouldn't say it's huge. You will definitely need, like I would say, 20 to 30 minutes a night to play and handle and just kind of care for your hamster. Sometimes less, but you also need time to clean the cage and things like that. So if you have no time, I would say don't get a hamster. And then make sure that you're interested in getting a hamster and you're not just gonna fall out of interest within a week of getting it because I think that's the saddest thing when kids get a pet and then they just fall out of interest with it within like the first month of having it. 
Now I'm gonna be talking about where you should get your hamster. So if you've decided you want a hamster, now you need to go get your hamster. Where should you get it? So the first place I think you should look are local rescues and different places in your community. Like if you have a rescue that carries small pets, then look there. Some rescues only carry dogs and cats and they don't have small animals available, which that's the case for me. There's no small animal rescues anywhere near me. So I had to look on Craigslist. So if there are no pets in your area at any local rescues or anything like that, the next place that you should check is Craigslist or Kijiji or different websites like that that people sell their stuff on. Kijiji is for Canada and Craigslist is for the US. And I personally went on there when I was looking for a hamster prior to getting Rhino and there were no hamsters in my area. However, I definitely think that if you're looking into getting a hamster, you should so check those places first because there's always hamsters on there. Every time I go on there, there are hamsters. There are just not any in my area. So if that's the case for you and there's no hamsters in your area, then I would say then you can go look for pet stores but all the hamsters on there are just fine hamsters. They're just hamsters and they want a good life. And maybe that person is moving, maybe they can't care for them anymore, but they still deserve a good life and um, just as much as any other hamster. So definitely look on there first, but then if, those places are just too far away. If it's hours and hours drive for you and you just can't make the drive to go get that hamster, then it is time for you to look at a pet store. Now, before you immediately go in and buy a hamster, I would say definitely ask the people if there are any elderly or disabled hamsters that you could possibly adopt that are in the back, any that were returned. Rhino, if you guys didn't know, was actually was returned to PetSmart. And so that's how I got him. And also know that there are adoption programs at Petco. So definitely ask around before you make the decision to just buy a hamster because I feel like that should be kind of a last resort because there are so many other things that you can do in order to get your hamster before having to go and buy one from a pet store. But obviously that is certainly an option if none of those other things you could do. All right, so the next section I'm gonna be talking about is what you need for your hamster. So even before you get your hamster, you should know the basics of what you will need for your hamster. You have a good area for your hamster, but what do you need? So we're gonna start with the cage, which I feel like is the most important thing. You need to have at least a 450 square inch cage for your hamster, that is the bare minimum. Make sure that it's large enough to have a wheel the size that you want, depending on your hamster, which I will get to later. And it is tall enough to have enough bedding in it. Now, there are okay pet store cages that are wire. However, in PetSmart and Petco, they do not really sell those on the shelves. Um, you would have to go on Amazon or different pet websites if you wanted to get a wire mesh cage that was large enough. So I would suggest, with my whole heart, I would suggest just going and getting a bin cage or an aquarium. Bin cages are very inexpensive and I have multiple videos talking about how to make those, which I will put up here. If you are interested in making your own bin cage, you really don't need much. You just need a bin, you need wire mesh, and you need something to cut the plastic and zip ties and that's all you need. And in terms of size, I would suggest getting a 120 square inch bin or more for your hamster. Rhino has a 110 inch with a 30 gallon bin added. So, you know, you can do something like that as well, but the easiest thing would just be to get a 120 or a bin cage. You can get those at Target, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. And then of course you can also get aquariums which are more expensive. I think there is a something called the Petco dollar per gallon sale that happens like once a year. And so if you wanna get a 40 gallon breeder, which I would say is the smallest aquarium that you should get for your hamster, you could get that for actually relatively cheap during that time. So those are just a few things that I just threw out there. For your cage, I would say no wire mesh cages. I'll pop up a picture up on the screen of a cage that you do not wanna get. You don't wanna get critter trails and you don't want to get the new style cage like Happy Tails or something like that. You don't wanna get those. Those are way too small. They're really hard to clean and no, just everything is wrong with those cages. I don't agree with them at all. And if you have one, just go get a bin. I promise you it, it will be so much better for your hamster. 
Next, I'm gonna be talking about bedding. Bedding is obviously very important because this is what your hamster sleeps in, this is what your hamster lives on, this is what your hamster pees and poops in. So uh, the beddings that I would suggest, suggest are paper beddings. You can also buy wood beddings. So some paper beddings that I would suggest are Carefresh, KT Cleaning Cozy, and then there's actually a Walmart brand hamster bedding called Critter Care, which I have actually bought a couple times. So there's a bunch of other paper beddings out there. Those are just a couple of examples for you guys. But yeah, paper beddings are great and I would definitely suggest those if you're looking for a bedding. And um, in terms of wooden beddings, the only one that I would suggest is Aspen. The beddings that you should stay away from, do not get these beddings, are pine, cedar, and fluff because those are big no-nos in the hamster community. Fluff can actually get wrapped around your hamster's limbs and get caught and kind of like strangle them and tear off their limbs and so no. Those are just not good and I would not suggest getting those for your hamster at all. So another thing about bedding is you wanna make sure that you're giving your hamster enough bedding to burrow in. Make sure that there is at least six to seven inches in at least one part of your cage, primarily where you will be putting the hideout because then you're hamster can burrow down. You definitely want more than two or three inches like that much. Your hamster's not gonna be able to make a good nest, a good burrow in that, and you want your hamster to be able to burrow because that's really, really important. So definitely make sure that your hamster's bedding is fairly deep. Next is a hideout. You will definitely need to be getting a hideout for your hamster. There's plenty of them on the market. Make sure that your hideout is big enough for your hamster. So of course, Robos, Roboroski hamsters. They are quite small, so they might need only like a smaller, but Syrians are quite big, so make sure that you're getting a larger hideout for them, one that they can feel comfortable in and is big enough for them. And another thing about hideouts is you don't want them to be transparent. You want them to be pretty dark so that not a whole lot of light can be getting in and they can have a good sleep. So just make sure that it's not clear or anything like that. Next is so important is a wheel. Your hamster needs a wheel. I'm actually um, pet sitting my friend's hamster right now and he was not given a wheel at all. And um, well, it was a very small wheel, but anyways, and your hamster needs a wheel for exercise. And so the hamster that I'm actually pet sitting for right now is quite large because he was never given a wheel. And so he was never able to exercise and it will kind of just force your hamster to go crazy, not having anywhere to exercise rhino seriously runs on his wheel all night long. So getting a good wheel for your hamster is so, 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 so important. And some hamsters like the wheel more than others, but it should still always be there um, available for your hamster. So in terms of sized wheels, Robos need at least a six inch wheel, I would say. I think that silent spinners are fine for Robos. There's a bunch of different wheels you can get on the market, but I would say six inch for Robos. For dwarfs, I would say an eight inch is pretty good. I use a wooden wheel, which I think is, an, is a great kind of wheel. You can find them on eBay and Amazon and another pet store, which I will put up here. For Chinese hamsters, I would also say an eight inch is a good size for them. I've never had a Chinese hamster, so if um, they need something larger than that, comment down below, but I think an eight inch is fine for them. And then for Syrians, I would definitely say get at least an 11 inch wheel for them because some of them can get quite large, 12 inches even better. The most important thing about your hamster's wheel is you wanna make sure that your hamster's back is completely straight. You don't want your hamster's back going like this and arching and bending because that can actually cause back problems for your hamster. And another thing about their wheel is you want to make sure that your hamster's wheel is a flat surface. You do not want to get wire mesh wheels like this because that can actually, like running on that so much can cause bumblefoot on your hamster. And that's just not good. It's not comfortable for your hamster to run on wire mesh. It's just very hard and it's not great. So if you do have a wire mesh wheel, you can actually cover it with duct tape just for a little temporary fix. The next is food and water. Again, probably one of the most important because your hamster needs it to live. But in terms of water, I would say water bowls are 
ideal in my opinion over water bottles just because number one you can see how low they're getting you know when you need to fill them up and whatnot and number two you can just keep them fresher personally for me i noticed that i change rhino's water so much more often now that he has a water bowl because you can just see you can see when it gets dirty and it's easier to clean out um in my opinion than using a water bottle however water bottles are fine as long as you're um, keeping it fresh every few days and then for food make sure that you are having food you do not want to put like a crap ton of food in your hamster's bowl and just leave that for a few days and good to go you definitely want to give him enough food but enough that he can eat in one night and not overfeed him. So scatter feeding the food is something that great that you should do that I think I will get to later. Um, and in terms of food, the food that I use is the Sunburst Hamster Higgins. I'll put a picture up here if you're wondering what it looks like. I really like that food and um, a lot of hamster YouTubers that I watch as well also like that food. So if you're looking for a food, it's in most pet stores and it's also in Ace Hardware, which is where I get it. Another thing about food is you will need to be giving your hamster fresh veggies, treats, and foraging pretty often. So for me, I give Rhino fresh veggies, I would say at least like two to three times a week, not every day, but a couple times a week just to give your hamster a good variety of nutrients and veggies and fruits and different things. I'm sure there's quite a few videos already on YouTube that you can look up if you're wondering like what kinds of foods you can eat, feed your hamster. Yeah, giving them fresh veggies is really important. And then also treats like sunflower seeds, millet spray, mealworms, things like that. Those are great healthy treats for your hamster. And you can also give them dried fruit and things like that as well. Next thing is foraging and hay. Now, I would say this is semi-optional, but this is really great for your hamster. I'm actually in the process of getting some foraging hays and sprays and different things like that for Rhino. These are just great. This is great enrichment for your hamster and it will really enrich their um, nutrients. Sprinkling the cage with hay and foraging and different things like that is a great way to keep your hamster entertained and it will definitely just add to their diet. So next is chews. Chews are also of course very important. Everything in this video is pretty important but chews are definitely important because your hamster's teeth are always growing and they definitely need if not on to wear your hamster's teeth down so they don't get too long. So for me, my favorite all-time chew, I talk about this in all of my videos, is Whimsy's. Um, a picture of a bag right here. They are the best. Um, Bill loves them. You can also give wood chews, of course, and different just random chews, etc. Next is enrichment, and this is kind of like toys and different things like that that you need to put in your hamster's cage. It includes things like tubes, wood logs, plants, different climbing toys, platforms, bridges. Make sure that you fill the space because that is super important. Um, have a whole lot of fair space in your cage. If you do, just go grab a toilet tube or go grab a um, egg carton you can cut those out and make really fun toys for your hamster with that there's tons of inexpensive toys that you can make get some good enrichment in there and then last for this section is a sand bath now I personally would say sand baths are an essential for your hamster because my hamsters love them like love 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 them Rhino loves his sand bath and he uses it as a toilet fun fact so your hamster uses a sand bath not only to clean themselves, but to dig and to play in. And um, I had a robo hamster and he loved to just play in that and um, twist and clean himself in there. All of my hamsters have loved it. And I just think like if you are going to get any enrichment item, a sand bath is probably on the top of the list, of course, like second to a wheel or something like that. So I'd say a sand bath is pretty necessary for a hamster. By the way, the best sand to get for your hamster is child's play sand. They come in large bags from your local hardware store and it will last you so, so long. And I would definitely suggest getting a sifter as well, which you can find at the dollar store to sift through and get any poops or peas that are in your sand bath. Talking about what you should do when you first get your hamster. So now you have the cage all set up you have your hamster and like what should you do so 
The first thing is to set up the cage before you get your hamster. Now, if you go back to my getting my hamster video, I did not do this and I admit it. I don't want to like look like a hypocrite or anything, but my hamster's cage first, which was definitely a mistake. Um, I, after I got Rhino, so I think it's just better to set your hamster's cage up first because then you won't have to be waiting in its carrier and it'll just be a more seamless, less stressful process for your hamster. So just set the cage up before you get it, simple and clear. Next is to place your hamster in his or her cage for the first four to seven days without handling or interacting too much. So when you first get your hamster and he's in his little carrier or her little carrier, you can just place that carrier inside the cage and wait for them to walk out on their own free will. You don't really want to force them out or do anything too crazy like that. In the days following, um, getting your hamster, I would say like four to seven days, uh, you don't want to handle your hamster, you don't want to really touch your hamster, you don't really want to interact with your hamster a whole lot. You just want to let them settle in. It's probably a very uh, full experience to be going from this place to that place to that place and you just want your hamster to kind of settle in and realize that this is home for them now. So a few days, of course, you can do your daily hamster activities like scatter feeding the food, changing things out in the cage and things like that. But a habit you can do is just talk talking to your cage, kind of letting your hamster hear their voice when they're out so that they know that, oh, this is a familiar person, um, I trust them and things like that so they know who it is when you're near the cage. The thing to start to do is to slowly start offering them treats, ruffling the bedding, and letting them sniff you. So go about your hamster activities like you normally would, like go through the bedding and kind of get the scent of the bedding on there. You can kind of put your hand up to your hamster and let them smell you. You can also start giving them little treats like from the palm of your hands like this. You don't want to like start doing too much handling or anything with the first few days. You just kind of want to get them used to you and let them know that you're not going to always just grab them or anything like that so they can start to trust you. Next thing is cleaning the cage slash daily care of your hamster. So daily care would include sprinkling the food around the cage and maybe putting some in the food dish, giving your hamster fresh veggies. This isn't every day, but like I said, every few days. And then of course, fresh water as well. Is petting them and hand feeding them. I do this every single night. I'm just giving Rhino a couple of treats here and there and then kind of some nights I will just kind of scoop him up and hold him for a few minutes just so that your hamster can get kind of used to that. Um, you'll need to spot clean the cage and this for me includes picking up any poops that I see, not all of them of course, but just like if there's an area of the cage that just has like a whole bunch of them, I will just try to like go in with a little scoop and try to pick some of those up or go and make sure that the sand bath is all nice and clean and just kind of sift through that. Um, and to make sure that your wheel is clean, you don't want that getting too dirty. I probably clean out my hamster's wheel twice a week, if not like once a week, just depending on how much he pees or poops in it. Some hamsters don't pee or poop in their wheel at all. And Rhino, unfortunately, decides to be a very messy boy and poop and pee in it quite a lot. So you will definitely need to clean that out if your hamster is quite messy like mine is. In terms of cleaning out the cage, I would say clean out the cage every three to four weeks as long as you do have a large enough cage like we talked about at the beginning. Um, say that it's not great to clean out all of the bedding at once. I think it just depends on how dirty your bedding is. Some hamsters are a lot messier than others. So you can clean out like half the bedding and then put in half new bedding or you can clean out like in my opinion you should you can clean out like most of it and then of course you want to put in um, a lot of their old bedding just to give a little bit of the scent you never want to clean out all of the bedding at once because then your hamster is not really going to get used to it super fast and it'll definitely stress them out so always make sure that you're putting a little of the old with a little bit of the new bedding kind of mixing that up for them in terms of holding and handling, you always want to make sure that you're using the cupping method with your hamster. You want to go kind of like this. If I have any videos, I will try to put them in. If not, then just try to go like that. Um, you don't want to go like this. You don't want to claw them. You don't want to try to pick them up like that because that's very stressful for them. Is that when you're holding them, you want to make sure that you're holding them kind of close to your chest. You don't want to kind of just be like holding them out in the open because that's kind of scary for them. So make sure that you're, you'll hold them close to your chest. 
And then another thing in terms of hamster care is you can also free roam them. Make sure that wherever you're free roaming them, there's no tinies or wires that they can chew on. Um, it's mostly just a clear area that your hamster can run around in and you can put toys in I think free roaming is a great thing that you can do for your hamster to let them get a lot of their exercise and get all their energy out So I would say a couple times a week to every day Just depending on how much time you have to spend with your hamster you guys so that is pretty much it for this video I really hope you guys enjoyed I know that this was kind of a long one but I definitely wanted to make sure that I got all of the information that I needed to get out out there I hope you guys watched till the end because I, I feel like there's just so much stuff that I talked about in this video and I seriously hope that this can help those of you guys who are maybe first-time hamster owners who have never owned a hamster and just need to know the basics and you just need to know what you need to do for your hamster and I hope that this really helped you guys if there's anything that I left out or forgot just comment down below hamster owner definitely comment down below um, watch this video because I just want to know how many people actually are first-time hamster owners and maybe you're getting hamsters for Christmas which by the way that's so exciting I'm so excited for you guys and I just hope that you guys all have the best Christmas because this is probably gonna be my last post before Christmas so see you guys in my next video bye